What's going on? Kyle Henderson, he's Coach Smook, both of Bama football on YouTube. We appreciate you guys being here. Coach, we had an opportunity to watch Alabama in action today. Uh, your early takeaways from watching uh, this running back room. We saw the quarterbacks, we saw wide receivers. Let's start with the running backs. What impressed you with watching uh, Justice Haynes, Jan Miller, Richard Young, Daniel Hill? All right, receiving out the backfield, you saw the drills, you saw them, no drop passes, no drop passes from any running backs from mm -hmm. what I could see. Um, one guy that stood out to me, it wasn't Justice, it wasn't Jam, mm -hmm. even though we did see the clip of Jam, uh, Justice with the footwork, the twitch ability, <laughs> right? But one guy that stood out was Daniel Hill. Mm -hmm. How big this young man is, but also he has some soft hands, y'all. And I think this wire, I mean, this running back room, <laughs> they look like wide receivers with their hands. This running back room is going to be viable assets in the pass game out of the backfield. What stood out to me was Justice Haynes. Um, his footwork is something else. We've talked about that before, but like Coach was saying, like that twitchiness that he has, I've never seen a running back have that, honestly. All the running backs that have come through, I've been watching Alabama for eight seasons now here, and Justice Haynes has the best footwork. I'm serious. Um, Jan Miller catches the football really well. Richard Young, same thing. Um, and like Coach said, Daniel Hill is a big dude, so uh, definitely watch that footage. When you look to the quarterbacks, Coach, what stood out about the quarterbacks today? Quarterback room mechanics. Mechanics mm. are consistent top to bottom. Jalen Monroe, Ty Simpson, uh, Austin Mack, and Dylan Long again. Mm -hmm. You know, and I'm not. I put them in that order because that's how they were. They were rotating. You know, yes. it was one drill where they were all throwing three passes. There were three routes in and three passes being mm. thrown at the same time. And Milro was the first guy. You work to the right of him was Ty, and then was Austin Mack, and they just rotate through. And um, I, I like to see the mechanics, the consistency of it. But also, I feel like these quarterbacks are becoming more and more comfortable because of the wide, wide receiver rotation mm -hmm. and how much they are rotating. That's That was an emphasis coming into this, this spring, and you can see that it's happening right now. We had an opportunity to watch the wide receivers as well, wide receivers and tight ends. And honestly, like, I didn't see a lot of drop passes. In fact, I didn't see any. I have to rewatch, but I didn't see any uh, drop passes. What stood out to you when watching the wide receivers? I, for, for me, uh, real quick, I saw Caleb Bodum. He is that physical specimen that we've expected. Kobe Prentice is that guy. Kendrick Lodd, that fast twitch. Emmanuel Henderson, coach, what stood out to you? Bubba Hampton, Ooh. another route technician. Uh, mm -hmm. For him to be an early enrollee, mm -hmm. to be a true freshman, he looks like he's been here before. Uh, Jeremy Bernard was another guy that, Ooh, you know, if yes. you talk, we asked about uh, yeah. Jeremy Bernard. I think you did ask Jalen Miro about Jeremy Bernard and what he's meant. And um, I think he's he's really found his position, his place in his offense and in his team and even in his wide receiver group. Um, and Kendrick Law, man, just another guy, just being a leader. You can see him coaching guys up on the sideline. You saw the clip about Jalen Miro uh, and what he said about Kendrick Law being a leader in that room. So I'm excited about this wide receiver room and the amount of depth that we have. I was able to ask Jalen Miro about the connection that he has, the chemistry with new offensive coordinator Nick Sheridan. Here's that clip right now. How has the chemistry been with uh, new offensive coordinator Nick Sheridan? Absolutely. I think with my time of playing football, this is a special moment for me because um, Coach Sheridan truly believes in me. Um, and he speaks that every single day. No matter if I, no matter if I make 10,000 10, passing, passing attempts that are completed, whether I miss a ball, he's saying how proud he is of me. And he, has, he comes with uh, positive reinforcement behind the coaching. Um, so this is, this is a special moment for me because of who he is as a person. Um, and I'm starting to learn, learning and growing because um, it's that trust factor we have between each other. Um, so I love our relationship because it's constantly growing, and um, you know I'm, I'm appreciating that. But with our offense, you know, um, it's been fun. It's been fun for me because I'm able to learn, and that's what that's what the biggest thing I want to do is continue to learn. The day I stop learning, learning and growing is the day I need to stop playing football. So um, for me, I'm just trying to keep learning. But with that comes with Coach DeBoer, um, Coach Mitch, who works with the quarterback, Coach Sheridan, our receiver coach. Um, so there's a lot of people that's around me to let, allow me to be the best quarterback I can be. And so with this offense, has been fun, um, and I'm excited for what the future holds. One of the things that he emphasized is the fact that Nick Sheridan believes in him and is giving him that daily confidence. Coach? Uh, I, that's what you want. Mm -hmm. Anytime you go through a transition like this, this team has with losing the greatest coach of all time to mm -hmm. retirement, getting a new coaching staff in, a winning coaching staff, you want that type of confidence with a winning system that's coming over. So to know that Nick Sheridan is very well versed in this in this system, he's one of the the catapult, uh, I guess you could say, cornerstones of this yeah. offense and how the scheme is ran. Um, it, it's definitely an important thing to get that that relationship built between offensive coordinator and quarterback. So I'm excited to see that. Switching to the defensive side of the football, we had an opportunity to hear from Malachi Moore. 
Uh, ask Malachi more about Keon Sab and Imani Jackson. Here's that clip. What have you seen from uh, the transfers in uh, Keon Sab and uh, Damani Jackson through a couple practices now? Yeah, uh, I can say that they're professionals at what they do. They come in, they handle their business. Um, we're always coming off the sidelines seeing how we could have did something better. So those guys are very motivated and driven each and every day. Uh, and it's been fun playing with them. What about uh, Devontae Smith? I mean, it seems like sometimes he's a little bit overshadowed back there. Yeah, uh, Smitty, he come out there, come. he's probably the guy, one of the guys that come out uh, with the most energy every day at practice. He, Goes out there and competes, angry, um, make tackles angry, and um, he's just a fun person to be around and have that type of energy around the team. One thing that he said is uh, those guys are that part, uh, true professionals. He also spoke about Devontae Smith, coach. Devontae Smith being the consistent guy that he is, you know, maybe not the starter right now mm -hmm. on the depth chart, but doesn't stop working. And that's mm -hmm. what you want when you're talking about building quality depth mm -hmm. in the secondary that is kind of not not as deep as you would like it to be so with guys you know wanting to solidify themselves before the portal window mm -hmm. opens and all that being that a veteran guy that can come in and still go and get it as if he was the, the starter mm -hmm. that's that speaks a lot on his character but it's also infectious and it teaches the young guys behind him how to come and show up for work every day while we were waiting for Jalen miro to come there was a big scrum of us kind of waiting for Jalen miro to come um, speak to us out to the right we saw this is exactly what it looked like we saw james brockemeyer uh, working with Coach Kapilovic, and uh, he was just snapping the football, and Coach Kapilovic was coaching him yes, up. Yes, yes, and that's one thing we, you, Coach Cap, he told us uh, in the first interview that we did with him that he is a very hands-on type yes. of coach. Mm -hmm. So to see him holding one of the the pads, yep. the, the blocking pad dummies, and just being active, locking in with his presumed mm -hmm. starting center, mm -hmm. right? That was an awesome thing to see, man. This this coaching staff has that young energy. They may not be young in age, but they have this young energy. I think a lot of them are ready to step up to the plate and step into the shoes of filling the shoes of Coach Saban and probably exceeding that. He's Coach Smook. My name is Kyle Henderson, both of Bama Football on YouTube. We will let you know where we're going to be um, the day of A Day, so stay tuned on that. Um, thank you very much for supporting us during our live shows. Uh, we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you. So think about becoming a fan funder if you like our content right here on Bama Football on YouTube. Um, we have Coach Kaylin aboard one more time before A-Day. That'll be on Thursday. We'll bring that press conference to you right here on our YouTube channel. And uh, we look forward to communicating with you guys inside the comment box. So let us know what you, uh, you know, any questions that you have uh, leading up to A-Day. We got you covered. Coach Smook, um, anything else before we bounce? Nothing else, man. I, you can feel the excitement. You can. You really can. From the players, from the coaches. I mean, this is a lot of these coaching staff. It's mm -hmm. their first A day. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of these freshmen. I mean, all the freshmen. This is their first one. You got transfers in. You got guys who are going into A day healthy this time. Yep. You know, yep. Jalen Miro missed his first A day. You remember mm -hmm. he said that. So uh, this is going to be a big moment for a lot of them. This is his last. Should be his last one. It should be a, a, a real entertaining A day game with all the events that lead up to it. I think this is going to be a like a huge thing. Outside of uh, Coleman Coliseum, that's your final four. Right, you got Nate OT staying. This place is hot. You got a ba uh, baseball game taking place right here. If you haven't been to Tuscaloosa before, or if you're a fan, come come check out your team. A day, it's free. Um, come do your thing. We got you covered right here at Bama Football on YouTube.